And with that, we'll get into Chapter 26. Chapter 26 is Thies and Venrover, the Artificer of Elios. Adele just Volk and Zelfri are going to meet Thiessen. Volk is very troubled by Fane's comments about Zelfri and trying to figure out on his own whether to believe Fane. Does he believe Zelfri? Is there any truth to these? So he's struggling internally and right next to them, Adelgis is also struggling internally. And he's worried more because he's able to hear thoughts now. And what is he going to hear from his dad? And if Thiessen was my dad, I'd be scared of hearing that as well. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to know. Can you turn that switch off, please? <laughs> yes. Some things are better left untouched. So they arrive at the Artificer building. It's very clean, except for a pile of trash in the corner. And as we talked about a few ch uh, chapters ago, Thiessen's Eldrin is a trash dragon. So I would have to guess that the trash is his trash dragon. Thiessen comes out and Zelfri gets into a a shouting match with him, confronts him, and Thiessen ends up agreeing to remove the leech. He says that it needs to bond shortly after being removed. As this discussion is going on, he actually offers for Zelfri to join him, which Zelfri is very, very opposed to doing. The pile of trash does turn out to be, be the trash dragon, <laughs> uh, and I can only, only imagine how awful it sounds when it moves, because it is a bunch of scraping and scratching it has to be awful. Not at this moment, but we do find out kind of shortly in the near future that it can actually speak. It actually communicates via telepathy, which is very cool and unique for dragons. Especially like Eldrins in general, because like everybody's Eldrin talks. Yeah, there's it's very, very rare to, to see. So very cool, very interesting. Zelfri ends up storming out of the lab while they're waiting. Adelgis is okay. Felicity is communicating. One of the few other Eldrin that can communicate through thoughts. She's in touch with Adelgis. She finds out that Adelgis is okay. The leech was removed. I just want to talk about how absolutely cold Theseon is towards his own son. Like, no hug, no, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. Like, what's going on? No. Oh, your leech is ready to come out. Let me go get you that taken care of for you. And shoot, he's more concerned about getting the leech out of his own son than he is about his own son. Like, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. He says, I have one leech, but I've got like three sons. <laughs> it's savage. It really is, but that's almost his mindset is that, like, I can't afford to lose the leech because there won't be another one, but... The leech is removed, but Thiessen isn't back. Adelgis isn't back. They're still in the back room, I'm assuming going through post-op procedures. Volk is wandering around the lab and ends up seeing a few documents in the lab about creating artifacts. And one of those is actually a letter from the librarian who is telling Thiessen that Eventide came back to talk about the runestones and was wondering if they could actually be recreated. And Thiessen says there's not really enough magic or enough knowledge to be able to do this. Thiessen finally returns with the leech and talks with Volk about how important it is. They are actually able to manipulate magic, and the plague is a manipulation of magic. So the leech is a possible cure for the plague, which is more important than what Gilly's doing, because Gilly is really treating the symptom with the trinkets. You know, they can't be truly mass-produced because they require star shards and the Wendigo horns. But if the leech can cure the plague, then that would solve the problem for everyone. Yeah, he also almost, like, treats her as if she's way beneath him, which that's just him in general, so not surprised there. You know, like, how dare you even compare me to her, speak about her and, you know, and me in the same sentence, you know, trying to compare us. Very high and mighty. <laughs> yeah. Thiessen as part of his his magic with his Eldrin, he can sense the type and power of artifacts, and he can actually sense the shield. He doesn't quite know what it's made from, but he can tell that it's poorly made. Not surprising since Volk had never made an artifact before. He, he thinks that he could help Volk fix it and make it a whole lot stronger. Even when he's like, oh, this is so poorly made, and Volk's like, yeah, that was my first thing I made. He's like, no, it wasn't. Like, there's no way. You definitely did not. 
Like, bullshit. He called him. <laughs> it looks well, like I least... did it. What do you want? <laughs> right. Volk was just like, you know what? I, you're not worth my effort of trying to argue about it. So just whatever. Finally, finally, Adele just comes out of the back room. He's practically falling down the stairs. Not in good shape. When And he does try to, like, straighten up and show that he's not limping or hurt, at least in front of his father. But, like, first off, there's no post-op. You you tell me that there's no meds? Like, are they just this badass that they could just go into surgery, have a leech removed, and not be, like, struggling really badly afterwards? I mean, he is. But, like, nobody's like, oh, here's some healing magic or potion or tonic or whatever to to help you out and recover a little itsy bit No. Yeah, this thing was attached to your organs. It's not like on top of your skin. They had to cut in to cut it out. It is major surgery. Give the guy something. <laughs> a couple of Tylenol at least. You know. <laughs> Some you can change the stocks, you'll be fine. There you go. <laughs> Cures everything. <laughs> Don't forget to hydrate. Hydrate is the most important part. Tea. Tea's great. And I want to thank everybody for listening and that uh, just want to remind everybody that we post our new episode every Wednesday morning around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, 10 Central. And for those that are out on the Pacific Ocean, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are podcasting on all platforms that podcasts are played on. We're also on YouTube for video. And we want to make sure we give our thanks to our editor, Dan Mackison, for including pictures and links to everything. And if you want to reach out to us on Google, we are at frithguildpod at gmail.com or Facebook or other social medias at Frith Guild Podcast. Pretty much, we, we own the market on at Frith Guild Podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> if you look us up like that, you'll find us somewhere. We want to thank the Frith Chronicles Wiki as well as a great resource. And again, link to everything is down below in the description section. And with that, we are ending this week's chapter and we will look forward to hearing from you next time. Scott, you got anything else? No, looking forward to it. All right. I think we're getting close to the tourney. Close. I, I thought it was earlier, but I was, I was a bit anxious <laughs> for it. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs>